Hi guys, welcome back. But I, what, what am I even saying? I don't even know right now. Welcome back to another five minute Friday where I, Jessica McGovern, international multi-awardering portrait photographer, shares a tip, technique or tool with you to improve your photography. If you're brand new here, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon. The bell icon will help you actually give you a notification every single time I release a YouTube video, which is every single week on a Friday. And basically I'm here to just help you. So if I do help you, even in teeny weeny itsy bits, way please do not forget to hit the like button or just do it right now just because you might forget and then drop something in the comments about why it was helpful for you and how you're going to use it moving forwards today i'm going to share a tip and technique with you guys that has been frequently requested but also we have kind of covered different versions of it before this is a brand new one to the youtube channel it's not something i've shared before but it is one method that i have been using for quite a while now to remove specifically equine photo halters although it can also be used for dog leashes electric wires fences all these little things you know super useful little tips and tricks so today's five minute friday is going to be all about how to remove long things easiest way of describing it long things from images in a really quick and easy way and before we get started, it is important to note that MTOGS, any premium member of our community, has access to one of the actions that slot right nicely into our little action pack now that you can basically just one click remove it. I'll show you how to do that right at the end. But um, for now, we're going to go through the manual version, the time consuming version, the incy bitsy, teeny weeny, minuscule step by step version, because it's always great to know exactly how to do things before you press a button and have it done automatically for you. So without further ado, let's just kick this off and get that timer started. <laughs> I was quite aggressive, wasn't I? So on the screen right now, you should be able to see this photograph of Viva, who was on a client shoot that we did recently. Now I've already processed these images. The client has already seen the pictures, purchased some amazing wall galleries and some other individual bits and pieces. But this is a really great image to have this example shown onto. So what we're going to do is just make sure that we're all open up in Photoshop. And this is a Photoshop step by step that we're going to do today. Day. and what we want to have open is the image layer it doesn't matter if it's called background I don't care what you call it we just need the image layer right we want to make sure that we can see that it's nice and clear then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a new blank layer so just click on this little icon right the way down here to add a new blank layer now the next step is actually easier to do if you have a Wacom tablet or another graphics tablet that you can kind of draw all over. So I have with us today my Wacom Intuos Medium Pro. Nothing is sponsored, I just use it. So that's kind of that. And the Wacom Pen. So what I can do with this pen, very badly because I'm horrendous at drawing, but it is easy with a pen than it is with a mouse, is go ahead and grab a brush tool. And the brush, we need to make sure that the opacity is set all the way up to 100%, the flow, all the way up to 100% and then we want the hardness of the brush to be at 100%. So we want this to be like a super solid line basically. Now size wise that's going to depend on what we're removing over here okay and we need to get this halter and line out. So I'm going to probably fine tune that when I get in there but we just need to make sure we have these pre settings ready. Then what I like to do personally is I like to just switch my palette back to the default by pressing D, D for dog, D for doggo. And I'm going to use the black to paint over this. Now, you don't need to use black. You can use any color you want. It really doesn't matter as long as you're painting with something and you have the solid edges. What we're then going to need to do is just go ahead and zoom all up in here. I'm just going to go and do option and then zoom. And then probably turn my touch on so that I can maneuver myself around this picture. And I'm going to start at one end of the object that I want to remove. So I'm going to start down this bottom end here. And um, I need to just make sure that that brush is nice and neat. It needs to be larger than the object where I'm moving, but not overly so. Let's not get carried away here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my keyboard shortcuts, which also work with a Wacom, to change the brush size. So you can see the size of my brush in relation to my object. You could go smaller if you've got a neat hand. I don't have a neat hand. What we want to then do is just draw in as smooth... <laughs> it's already started bad, hasn't it? In as smooth a line as possible up the object that we want to remove, right? So you, and like I said, you can use kind of anything you want to use, but we want to stick 
within the lines of the object that we're taking out. Anywhere where you go like way outside the lines here is not going to remove itself well, but we need to keep going so we can get this clean removal. Now, some of you guys will be saying, well, hang on a hot sec, Jess, you've shown us five different ways to remove things in Photoshop before. I'll link a video to that. And I've gone into other things in a lot more detail, such as the healing brush tool. I will put a link to that video above. And you might be saying, well, why can't we just use those things, Jess? Why are you giving us more things? I'm giving you more things because knowing all of these different tools is actually sitting you in a better place. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller using the square brackets for this part under here because um, I don't want to be using too much space there. As you can see, you don't need to be good at doing straight lines to do this method, right? You don't. So you want to make sure you're going over everything. And then look, we've got other things that we could do taking out and these little nicks on Viva's face because, you know, maybe she's getting up to some, some, some stuff. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to whiz over these little bits. So essentially all we're doing is we're just drawing with a solid color over the top of anything that we don't want to stay in the picture. As you can see, we now have the most ridiculous looking image that you've ever seen. We've got lines going all over the place, dot, dot, dots, but they're all on this new blank layer, layer three in my case. It could be called whatever you want on yours. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to just whiz all the way up here to select. And then in the select menu, we're going to go all the way down to load selection. And what that's going to do is it's going to identify empty pixels, right? And it's only going to select pixels that have got stuff on them. We've painted on them right? So it's going to only select the painted bits. And we do that by making sure our settings are set up as so. So what you need to make sure is that the first part of it is the title of your layer, right? I said mine was layer three, yours could be something else, but you can see layer three is here because mine was layer three. I'm going to make sure the invert is unselected and we're going to make a new selection from that. So we're going to click OK and you can see that we've got these wiggly lines, we call them marching ants, around everything that we painted on, but we're not finished yet. What we need to do is go ahead and back into select and then down to modify and then over here into expand. And what expand's going to do is it's going to give us cushion room around the edge. This is a very important step, so please don't forget it. I'm going to personally expand this by about four pixels, which is more than enough for my resolution. You might need to play with that. We just need a bit extra, a bit more. So we're going to click OK. And then with that done, all we need to do then is click on our bottom most layer, the picture, the image, the image that we started with, turn off our liney layer that we drew on. OK, so we've still got our selection. Okay, we've removed the lines from being visible and we've clicked on the image layer. Very important steps. And then what do we do? We do one of our five ways to remove stuff in Photoshop with this selection made. So we just do a shift backspace to end up at the fill panel. And we're making sure in this instance that the content is content aware. Okay, and I just have my settings as seen here. You can change them if you want. Click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to whip out anything that we drew over. So then all we need to do is deselect anything that's selected, okay, which is a command D. Command D will remove that selection. And pretty straightforward and quite quickly, what we've done is we've just removed the halter and the line. Now, is this perfect? It's never perfect. Removing things in Photoshop rarely ends up perfect first time out. So I want to go in and have a look at where I did my removals for things that look not right. For example, the coat on this section and this vein is not right. It looks mushy. So that's when you go ahead and grab your healing brush tool and you can go ahead and use your methods that we've already gone through so many times before of how to heal things in Photoshop. And that's when you go ahead and use that. So I'm not going to do that today because it's outside the scope of this little tip technique tool that we're running through. But like I said, I had linked that earlier and I'll make sure it's linked in the description below. So by doing this method, you very, very quickly if you're good at drawing. I mean, I'm not, but it's still quicker than me going with the healing tool, with the clone tool, with the spot healing brush tool, with all of the little tools and taking it out step by step. That for me is a lot quicker. So you can just whiz over with a paintbrush everything you want to take out. And then you want to make sure you go up to select and then load selection. Make sure the settings were the same as what I had on my screen. And then what you want to do is go ahead and expand that selection by around three to five pixels. I personally find is sufficient. And then at that point, 
you want to turn off your liney layer, click on your image layer, and then do a content aware fill. It sounds a lot, go back through the steps, it'll be nice and simple. Now I did say that the mTOGs get an action for this. So I'll just really quickly run through how that looks. So let's go up to the point where we had finished our selection here. So you can still see that we have all of the rope in, the rope's still in there from the halter. I've painted over it, but I've got this action already. So it's linked in the blog post below. You'll be able to see it if you're logged in. You just go ahead and click the line remover and off it goes. It does the exact same job and you're left clean and ready to move forwards. So simple, so fast. So that's the little tip for today. Was it useful for you? How are you going to use it? You're going to use it on leashes and collars or on halters, or on wires, or on lines, or on other liney things. Let me know. Let me know if you've tried this before and any issues that you had with it. Maybe we could help to make it a little bit more seamless. And basically, that's kind of it. If it was helpful, like, comment really useful things for us. And I'll see you again next week for another five minute Friday. I'm going to just interrupt the end of that recording there. You all thought it finished, but it hadn't yet because I totally forgot to show you the actual finished picture of this picture of Viva. So that's the end result. A little Viva looking adorable. Okay, I'll go now. Adios.